Hello, how are you doing today? My name is Sonia Javette. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much for being here. It's Friday, December 16th. We are almost through the year. Oh my gosh, so glad <laughs> to be almost done. I'm ready for new adventures and new horizons in my life. So Thank you so much. And uh, we got a lot of wonderful, wonderful people today on stage in the green room, hanging out. Literally, I have a green room now, but no. Um, let me do the, this is week, uh, this is a film four of nine. So nine videos, nine songs. Let me introduce it. This is, uh, bring it up here, push the buttons. And I'm gonna bring myself down. This song is called Laptop PC Webcam Blues, and it is song number four from me. Here I am, five years later, starting all over again. And love woman, digital world, laptop PC, work and blues. Use what you got till you get what you want. And a love woman in a digital world. Uh, uh, digital world. Turn through lower thirds from sick right for you. Webcam won't work, not in the frame. Avatar pixels turn gray, then you fall off the stage. Log woman, digital world, laptop PC. So this is the way we learn. <laughs> Use what you got to get what you want. I am. And a log woman in the digital world. Digital world. Amazon, Canva, Facebook, Meta, Instagram, LinkedIn, Stage, TikTok, YouTube, SBB Live, Austin Music, TV Channel 16, and Log Woman in a Digital World, Laptop, PC, Work and Blues, use what you got till you get what you want. And a long woman in a digital world. Digital world. Digital world. Digital world. Yay. So that video took me probably a whole week to do. So that was fun. Uh, let me bring up my guest. First guest today is Miss Ami. Ami, uh, she's coming to the stage. Here comes Mr. Wiley Keep. I finally said it right, right, Wiley? And Mr. Alvarero. It's Keep, right? 
You you got that the O is silent, oh. but it's the shorty instead of the the, the, the longy. It's cup. Kip. Kip. <laughs> I, I think by the sixth show, you're going to nail it. Right. It'll be right by then. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much for being here. Appreciate you hanging out with me into the room. All right. So, um, Amia, did I get your bio? I know I did. <laughs> Let me pull it up. And uh, Wiley, you want to re- um, introduce yourself and what you do, sir? Okay, let me let me do this. Wait, I can do solo. Wait, watch, go. Solo. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right, so hey, I'm Wiley, and uh, I've, I've had this company called Coyote Music since like 1995. Before there were websites, I had a website. Uh, it, was, it was pretty cool. Um, and I've worked with uh, over 500 bands, really just promoting them. Um, and, uh, you know, I've been in lots of bands and things like that. Um, I'm excited to be on Sonia's show once a month uh, to, to talk about some of the bands I've, I've met, uh, some recently and some going way, way back. Uh, and today I'm, I'm super excited to have uh, Alvaro Del Norte from Piñata Protest out of San Antonio. Uh, they're just, if you haven't seen them, they're uh, a really, really kick-ass uh, punk band. Uh, they've been killing it for, I mean... I've, they were going strong 10 years ago. So uh, Alvaro can tell us exactly when they started. But yeah, uh, yeah thanks for having me on. And bef- you know, before we get too deep into everybody else, uh, mm-hmm. sorry, we can go around, but we need to talk about your video. Oh, that's right. I always forget. <laughs> I forget. And Amia, on the side trip, real quick, I did get your bio, right? I'm just asking for myself because I probably lost it. Is yeah, she yeah, frozen? Totally, yeah. Oh, she's frozen. Yes. Okay. Oh no, is my frozen? Right. Just a little bit, but it's okay. It's technology, it's still learning. Um, go, Wiley, go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, while Amia's on freezing. Uh, hey, Alvaro, why don't you take a moment to, to introduce yourself? Hey, uh, everybody, very nice to be here. Thank you, Sonia, for, for allowing me to be a guest here. Um, my name is Alvaro Del Norte, I play in uh, a Tex-Mex punk rock band from San Antonio, Texas, called Being at the Protest. And yeah, we've been together, I think, 14 years, 13, 14 years. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not, I haven't been keeping count. Um, yeah, we've, you know, we, we're in, in, in the thick of it, you know, still. Um, it's, uh, the band itself is, a, I think, a reflection of, of uh, a lot of the music culture that you can find here in San Antonio. Uh, it's, it's basically it's punk rock and Tex-Mex music combined together. Um, if you're familiar with bands like Ploggy Molly, Gogo Bordello, Dropkick Murphys, we're basically the Mexican version of that. So <laughs> probably the best way to describe it. One of the first bands I ever heard in Dallas was a Tejano punk band. I went, that's fun. I like it. Do it some more. <laughs> Do it some more. You remember the name of that band? Nope. <laughs> they were shiny and loud and fun. I was like, okay, I can clean the house like this. Lady Amia, same thing for you as I keep looking. Yeah, yeah. Is it unfrozen now? Or? You are unfrozen, beautiful one. Great, great. Thank you. No, I mean, I think it's awesome that, you know, Alvaro and I are sharing this uh you know, stream tonight or today, because, you know, also that's where I started. My career was also in San Antonio as well. Um, you know, I noticed that the scene out there was was really like, you know, heavily like steeped in rock, rock and such like that. And there wasn't a lot of opportunity for like R&B, hip hop, you know, really at a lot of venues. So I got together with a bunch of fan, uh, friends and was just like, let's figure out how to make this shake. So, uh, yeah, I definitely we started about like 2014, 2015 and just kind of, you know, went from there. Make this shake, she said. <laughs> yeah, make it shake. Uh, Room. Because Sonia is, is humble and doesn't, uh, you know, always forgets to talk about her own stuff. Uh, I want to know about your video. So, um, Alvaro, and, uh, just so you know, uh, Sonia's been, she has this album. She's releasing one song a week. Month. Or, uh, one, one song a month. Um, <laughs> for over a series of months. Um, and she wrote the whole album 
kind of based on the pandemic experiences. So every song is is just kind of a literal story of of what's going on there. Um, and am I correct that you're videographer, director, <laughs> performer, engineer? Uh, I don't even know what else goes into making oh, the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Yes, we do all the things because I'm an overachiever. <laughs> 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 but you know, uh, as all the others uh, during the pandemic, you had to find a way to perform. So uh, I was already performing in virtual reality, and then everybody came online. And I went, "What y'all doing?" <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of people that performed online in their pandemic. I was like, nope, I'm gonna just go back in here. So I started working on this stuff. So, yeah, the the editing and sequencing. Amia, one of your videos I I looked at was like that. I was like, oh, she's. Did you do yours video as well? Did you create you. one of those? And um, a lot of the videos that have been out in the past four years, I have been making those on my own. Um, there's one <laughs> video that was not created obviously because I was in the video I think that um which was for the love that wasn't shot by me or edited by me but everything else yeah I've shot and edited uh, or like you know like design myself and such like that so yeah I also engineer myself the last two albums I just put out this year I engineered them myself as well produced about 80 percent of them uh, all that great stuff so because yeah. we right. have to <laughs> yeah yeah literally. so so, <laughs> so I'm grateful I'm grateful Alvaro <laughs> I want your lights now. I have decided. Watch <laughs> next time. It's going to be a dance show in the back. That's Thank I love you. it. Uh, <laughs> so, I'm going to ask my favorite question that I always ask um, because y'all haven't asked me anything about the video. <laughs> what's your What's if you had a superpower? What would it be? <sighs> Wiley doesn't count because he's already asked. I've already asked him several times. So it's you two. <laughs> you were first. <laughs> I'm still thinking also. <laughs> I was hoping you'd have your answer. Um, oh, yeah. I, I can, oh, you got, uh, I can think of something real quick. You know, I have no problem. <laughs> I, gotta, I have three, three top. But if we don't, talk about one, you know. <laughs> yeah. Bring it. Okay. All right. Uh, for me, it would be uh, to fly. I mean, it sounds cliche, but I think it's pretty cool. I don't know. I love going on airplanes and, you know, but yeah, I think flying would be awesome. Just go anywhere you want in the, yeah. in the world, you know? I feel that. Yeah, yeah that's, mine that's, would be the I'll... teleport for sure. Teleport. Oh, better. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love traveling, but I'm like, sheesh, the time to get there sometimes just makes it like, ah. So teleportation, number one. <laughs> Well, the that toughest to part is time, time, and then money. And if you could teleport, you know that's great. As long, you know, exactly. some of us like you might need to. Can you teleport <laughs> with a guitar in your hand, or you know, with a, <laughs> with some drumsticks or something? <laughs> yeah. Can you take your your puppy with you and your <laughs> significant other and the guitar? <laughs> Do right. a Harry Potter <laughs> thing. Touch the cup. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Touch. Yeah. Thank you. Touch the cup. Um, if you had a, okay, here's, cause I had this list of questions. It's, it's over 60 questions and I just pick random. So here's my, <laughs> here's my, one of my favorite. What age do you wish you could permanently be at? Hmm. Mm. We'll go with Wiley. Uh, 27. There, there, there. Yeah, no, that's. <laughs> Because you're you're old enough to know stuff, but you know, young enough to not have knees that creak yet. Oh. Um, okay. But then you know, yeah, old enough to you know, if you need to rent a car, <laughs> you can drink if you want to. Uh, and yeah, you just have eternal youthful twenty-seven-year-old beauty. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say something related to the twenty-seven curse. Uh, yeah, right. you know, you know what I'm saying? What's that? Oh, just, it's, uh, a lot of, there's just numerous number of musicians who happen to die at uh -huh. 27 and they call it a curse. Like, you know, you get this divine gift of, of being a, a, a musician, but you, you have to die at age 27. 
and you can there's Janis Joplin, Kurt Cobain, who else? I that's how I know by that there's like Jimi yeah. Hendrix. There's at least like five. I don't know. Yeah. Who? Come here. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think Mac Miller as well. Um, a lot of people in hip hop as well. I mean, yeah, it's like pretty, like, you know, the idea of like the rock and roll idea that, you know, oh. people no. die at 27. It's, it's <laughs> like, 20, 27 <laughs> Club. Yeah, the 27 <laughs> Club. I was like t terrified of that club. I was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> I will be not I don't Brian, remember 27. Brian Owens, Jim Morrison. <laughs> About the same as the hood, so. <laughs> Robert Johnson. Yeah, there's many of them. Right. Yeah, it's crazy. What about you, uh, Amia? We got two uh, uh's in that room. That's cool, Amia. <laughs> I want to go with 80. I feel like 80 is a fun age because um, people just kind of leave people who are 80 alone. They just kind of do their own thing. Um, you know, you can be super healthy at 80. I've seen some very healthy 80 year olds. Oh, yes. Work out. That's my plan. You know, I plan to be here until I'm 114. So that's more of like, you know, a young <sighs> chill for me. So I'll have, you know, <laughs> a little ranch and just be out there sipping, sipping some uh, whiskey or tea. You never, you never know. <laughs> you know, smoking some reefer. I feel like that's a great time. 80. Yeah. I'd be 80. <laughs> No taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody just goes, mm hmm. She don't. Bunch, mm -mm. Of, <laughs> bunch of discounts at the restaurants. and Exactly. Oh, yeah. oh, discounts. AARP. I mean, tell me. <laughs> she <laughs> said AARP. <laughs> tell me, man. 20% off at Denny's and IHOP and movie theaters. <laughs> Get That's a free a meal every time you come or get a free ride. Uh, okay. If for me, I haven't reached an age that I want to stay at yet. So, yeah. And on that note, let's bring Lady Amia to the stage and let her perform. Um, you want to tell us about your new song? I'm going to bring you off, fellas, slowly, mm -hmm. slowly. Oh, I should have done the solo thing. Okay. I'm learning. <laughs> Push the button. Okay. Um, <laughs> So, <clears throat> who, what, where, why, when about this song and yeah. then sang, sang for us. So this song is actually produced by me, written by me. Thank you. Thank you so much. The song is written by me, produced by me, engineered by me. But also, um, this song is near and dear to my heart because it's also a remix of a hymn that I grew up singing as a kid. Um, so it's called Faith 333. Um, and I hope that you enjoy it because I enjoy it a lot. I enjoy singing it. So.
Thank you so much. That was Faith 333. Yeah. I have and I have to push the buttons. Push the buttons. Push the buttons. <laughs> Bing. <There. laughs> Took a minute, but I found your um, I found your bio. So let me <laughs> let me now let me read her bio because I finally found it. It says, <laughs> "Master of many trades should be mistress." Master of many trades, Amia is an independent artist, recording academy member, sociology or psychology, psychology sociology. professor, sociology. Sadian, sociology. sociology, sociology professor, business intelligent professional, and a sonic composer, writing and performing with. The mantra, inspire, love, dream in mind. Amia captivates her audience with introspective performances, production, and lyrics. While on break from touring, Amia serves her community through education and innovation. Yes! I wanted to do that at the beginning, and I missed all that loveliness. So. <laughs> I appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you. So you're just a super nerd and an artist. Nice. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> what what uh, college level grade teaching? What what grade? Yeah, I what? teach college. Yeah, I teach at UNT Dallas, and yeah, I teach upper division, lower, you know, intro classes, all of it. So yeah, I love it. What's, what is it? Cuckoo! <laughs> <laughs> For the Hawks, my my daughter. Oh, no, I think there. Uh, oh, it's not. Yeah, the Jaguars. Well, yeah. For the yeah for the UNT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My daughter went there for a little bit, so. Oh, that's awesome! She, Heck yeah! She played, she played viola, oh, or plays nice. viola, whichever. One or the other. That's beautiful. Wally, Heck Wally yeah. goes what? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's so much to me, sir. You just don't know. Let me pull up this <laughs> other video. Oh, your voice oh. is great, Amia. Thank you. Like, I appreciate uh, that. Thank you. Uh, Talented. I really, sister. I really like the when you're playing the the bongos. Uh, I Thank I you. love it. Yeah, it great job on that. I love it when musicians like um they incorporate you know percussion instruments. Um, even though you're having like music on a track, yet you're still adding on top of that. And yeah, fantastic. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's great. I was I was looking at your website earlier and um it's like you you do all these different things. I mean, like songwriting workshops and like, I mean, it seems like you could go engineer my album or you could help me write all my songs for the album. Uh, you could go yeah. perform the album. <laughs> 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 That's really yeah. cool. Like, um, Thank you. especially in in this day and age, um, you know, if, if you're one note, you better be great at that note. You know, it 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 kind of makes more sense to to be flexible and diversify a little bit and, and be able to to do all sorts of things. Uh, so that's that's really impressive. Oh, and then oh, and then just also professor on the side. You know, <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. Very passionate about education. I mean, I wish they would pay more, but same thing with music. But you know, we're working on it. We're working on it. So. <laughs> We're working on it. Hopefully, all you people out there are are nudging, judging your your uh, congressional. Is that the right words? Then people in the pub in the politics tell them to give us money because yeah. uh, what is it? AFM four thirty three and Austin Texas musicians are judging them. Make give us money. Uh, Alvaro <laughs> was was talking earlier that that he was previously a teacher. Um, I have my teaching certification. And at one point, I, I mean, I was, I actually accepted a fourth grade teaching job and was ready to go and then, and then decided to shift. But yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting that the, the talent for writing and creativity also frequently mirrors education and mentorship. Yeah, without a doubt. I've noticed that, I've noticed there's a lot of uh, musicians who are also teachers at the same time. And I have a theory for this. I do. Uh, so I think that when you're a teacher, like, you're pretty much our performer. You're there, um, you're, the students is like your audience, right? And then you're putting on this show and you really need to captivate your audience and, and, and take them on a journey, you know, through learning, which I think is very similar to like music, you know, taking the audience somewhere, showing them something. Um, and, you know, being, being, being a performer too, I think 
like if you're a good performer on the stage, I think that really helps be a teacher because you're essentially you are entertaining people, right? You have to keep Facts, that attention yeah. too. So. Yeah, because the monotone teachers are the ones that I go, mm, I'm going to go sleep in just a second if you don't Hello? fix that. Fix it. Had some really wonderful teachers throughout my career. So the ones that were like, mm, I was probably asleep. So you're correct, sir. You have to be an entertainer to uh, teach as well. Um, my other question for today is, <laughs> okay, just pass that one. What are your, because um, <laughs> you know, some of them are not for, what made you want to become a musician? I'll, I'll just ask that to the rooms and to Wiley. I'll let Go ahead, Wiley. <laughs> um, I think for me, it, it was when I was in elementary school, um, and junior high, my sisters were in the percussion section of marching band. Um, and so I, I, I went to a really small town, uh, Van Horn out in West Texas. And so the, it was just real small. The band was real small. So I actually used to sit directly like on the row, like in with the band, I would sit directly below the drummers and they would just like pound. Like, like, and I just felt it in my head and in my soul and, and everything. Uh, and I just thought, this is the coolest thing I've, you know, ever experienced. So the the high school drummers in in Van Horn in the eighties uh, made me always want to play drums. I'm like, till the day I die, I will play drums. Yeah. Um, and that I mean, it grew a little bit, uh, dabbling guitar and singing and stuff. But that passion was born then. Uh, but it was the performers. It's like everybody around here is captivated on what's happening right there. Show me, show me. Who else? Share. Amia. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I grew up around music, so my mom's also a musician. She's like, you know, she's like the minister of music at my church growing up. So I've been around music all my life since I was, you know, in the womb, out the womb. So I've always wanted to be an artist because I, you know, enjoy like, you know, jams. I enjoy music, you know, all all genres, all that good stuff. So I was around musicians growing up too, like travel musicians, the group Seven Day Adventist. So, you know, a lot of people like Take Six, Binding Night, you know, uh, Kurt Franklin, they would be, you know, coming to our church and, you know, performing or sometimes they would stay with us, you know, um, wow. like, you know, some like artists Sorry. from like, what is it, like, like Magician and stuff like that. Those choirs, I also was like in a traveling choir as a kid, like, I think since I was like three, like I was just like I want to sing. So like, um, so oh, yeah, I love it. Thank you. Yeah, for real. So I've always been and always loved it, but I waited to get into the business side until I felt mature enough. So because that's a whole other animal. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Yeah. Uh, uh, me and I met at a comp. Uh, what did we go to? Uh, at the Fisher oh, Studios in Austin? I was like, where were we? And uh, a group of people. We all combined together. It was a lot of us with the hats. And I was like, this is the hat crew right mm -hmm. here. So I want to interview everybody from that crew, but I don't remember all the names. So I'm working on it one person at a time. Go ahead. <laughs> hat people, come on. We got we got things to do. <laughs> <laughs> things to do. All right, let's introduce. Okay. Oh, wait. Uh, go ahead. What, what got you into music? Me? You and, and Alvaro. Alvaro, your turn, sir. Um, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm totally opposite than, you know, from Amia, you know, I, I grew up in a very non-musical kind of household where like music was almost like looked down upon, um, you know, it was seen as maybe a hobby at best. And, uh, but, um, I just kind of fell into it when I was in high school, I started, I discovered punk rock and it just changed everything. And, and I learned how to play the guitar and, and from there. I eventually I just started my band which I'm in but I never um thought that I'd be doing it you know make it my life so I feel like right now I'm like kind of playing catch up I'm trying to learn everything I should have done you know so I'm I'm always listening to music different styles of music um and, you know I'm learning more about music theory and music production all that technology stuff oh my god so uh I don't know uh, I started late but um um, yeah, that's my answer. 
And you, Sonia? What was the question? No. <laughs> Birth. Uh, same same as Amia. I probably heard music um, uh, as an infant from my mother while she was going to church. My mother has had or had 13 brothers and sisters. So singing was part of the, the family. If you couldn't sing, you had something else to do. Uh, but my immediate family, I'm the only entertainer uh, of it. So um, I think my first, um, uh, I wasn't a talk, I don't still today, don't speak as well as I sing. So I was singing before I could talk. Okay. <laughs> and it's like blah, 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 blah. And they're like what <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's powerful I, I I think a a lot of songwriters uh like you said you don't speak well I mean I can argue with there about that but so you you sing instead but a lot of songwriters it's like I can't get my message out unless I put it into a song and then that's how I get my feelings out it's, that's really interesting. Often, often, often for me. Okay, we're going to share the video. Oh, I have to bring the video. What do we got coming up? We have Alvarez. There you uh, go. You want to talk I'm, about this video a little bit, Alvaro? Yeah, okay, quick. Sure. Uh, we we uh, shot this uh, this year. It's a brand new video, and it features uh, David Dejas of, from the punk rock band the casualties um and it was inspired from um growing up um and you know as a kid you know sometimes you have to hide things from your parents like sometimes it's music the music you're listening to maybe it's like drugs <laughs> you know uh so we kind of played with that idea you know of um but flipped it on its head so we have uh the daughter in in this video she she's growing up with her parents being really like into punk rock and um and their the parents are trying to get the daughter to also love <laughs> punk rock and live that lifestyle and dress the part and everything but uh the, the daughter being rebellious she you know she she actually likes the hano music and tex mex and but she has to keep it hidden from her parents uh so basically the the video is just a play on on that that idea like what if you know um but it's, it definitely was inspired though by by growing up you know in it's kind of a similar circumstance but flipped <laughs> all right you want to uh, give us the title name oh yeah it's called uh, the song is uh, Tragos Amargos Licor. it's actually a cover of a song by Ramona Ayala uh and so we have punk it out make it all punk rock and, and fun I had it perfect. Okay, bring you all off, bring this up, and push the button. Here we go. Happy birthday to my baby girl! Happy birthday, Mika! Ooh. Open your present. You're gonna love it. I know it. So good. Okay, I got something to pull it all together. See, 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 see. It's a joker! Look at me! Oh, see, vicious! I'll play in the sex pistols. Ow! We can match, Mika. I'll borrow it on the weekends. Come Oi. on, Mika. Oi! Dale. I thought we were the cool parents. I would have loved a pair of Doc Martens for my birthday. Nobody ever bought me a choker. Maybe we should go talk to her. Yeah. Esta mi corazón y estos tra 
tragos que tomo yo son pura tristeza y son mi dolor. Te fuiste, no sé por qué. Yo sé que me quería, yo sé que me daba. Por si acaso quieres regresar, te voy a esperar, te voy a esperar. Tragos se llama alcohólico. Wait a minute, wait a minute, stop, stop playing. Okay, that's awesome. Um, unmuting of everybody. Unmute. Okay, there. Have we unmuted? Uh unmuted me. Okay, try again. All right. I think I've unmuted everybody. Say yes. Say something. Yes. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It's, it's just a, a video reinforcing family values. <laughs> In such a wonderful way. Uh, that looks like every rebellious child going, I don't want to do it, you said. No. Loved it. Right, those, um, who's in the video? Uh, well, the, the main, I guess, star is uh, David Tejas from The Casualties. He's, he's the dad. And... Um, uh, Kelly Rosa uh, is in there. She's a professor, musician herself. She played the mom, and and uh, then Sarah was a daughter. She's a local uh, actress from San Antonio. And then um, uh, everybody in there was just basically just friends and fans of ours that we got to come out on a Tuesday, <laughs> and um, yeah, make it happen. We shot it. It took us two days to do it, and. Uh, uh, yeah, the the director with Saint Primo David uh, was uh, was amazing. So yeah, I'm very uh, very happy with it, the way it came out. It looks great, and so yeah, it looks great. It sounded good. The visuals. I was like, what's going on? Yes, okay, with the hair. <laughs> How long did he take his hair like that? <laughs> Oh, that's his normal hair. That's how he always what? he always has it. So, yeah, not all the time, but like you know, for for shows, you know, um, they always spike up their hair. So his their hair products. <laughs> uh, and, uh, uh, go ahead, Wiley. So pinata protest uh, was something that that my dad and I have connected on too, because uh, he uh, he went to high school in New Braunfels, and he's eighty now. So like he's from that generation, um, but grew up, uh, Alvaro and I have talked about this, like, you know, there's a, a whole German community in, in central Texas. And, and that was my dad. Uh, my grandfather spoke German before English. And so polkas are a huge part of German heritage, but they're also a big part of, of Mexican heritage. And like those uh, cultures meet in San Antonio, basically. Um, so my dad was never, I'm, I'm all into like heavy metal and hard rock. And my dad was like, eh, you know, he didn't, he didn't hate on it, but he didn't ever like it. And, um, one day I gave him a, a, a pinata protest CD. I was like, just listen to this dad. You know, this is, you're going to like this band. And he fell in love with it. And, um, one day we went to San Antonio, uh, we saw y'all play on the river walk. I don't know, oh, 2016, yeah. 2017, uh, and my dad just freaked out. He's like, I can totally get behind this. You know, this is fantastic. Uh, he wanted to to uh, learn the tuba just so he could join the band. <laughs> uh, but I, I just, I think you see this in your audiences all the time that, and, and like the video, I mean, you get kids who dig it because it's loud and noisy and rebellious. 
And then you get 80 year olds that are like, yeah, these kids get it. You know, talking about you. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I definitely see that, you know, at the shows, uh, we have a very, very diverse crowd, very, very diverse. Um, and, and yeah, I think um, a lot of that's due to, you know, the, the, music, the music itself. And um, we, interesting though, the fact you bring it up, we did recently have a full, full on show with a tuba player. Our bassist couldn't make it. So we asked a tuba player friend of ours if he could play the bass parts uh, on tuba. So yeah, he, he, uh, he helped make it happen. And it actually worked out really, really well. It was really cool. It, it sounded just like you would imagine. Um, and it was a lot of fun. And, and since people have still been asking us to do it again, I'm like, no, that was just, maybe well i don't know maybe i don't know it was pretty cool though it was a lot of fun say how much money you got for the budget what's your budget <laughs> what's your budget okay uh uh my other my my another mm, shall, shall I question did uh, did y'all do like contest as you were growing up that helped move you along in your music career or have you tried any co contest at all like the, what they call them, battle of the band things. I was in a, I was in one like early on. Um, I'll tell you a quick story about it. Um, and since then, I, I don't, I, I don't like doing them at all. Um, so we were in a battle of the bands. It was kind of a regional thing, kind of South Texas. And uh, we, we, we won the one for San Antonio. And then we had to compete on the finals and it was against his band from New Braunfels. Um, so at the time, I think this was the year, I don't know, 2010, I think, I don't know. Um, anyways, uh, our fans showed up, their fans showed up, right? Uh, um, the bands all performed and at the end, the fans would vote and they would vote by, by cell phone. So our fans, for the most part, don't have a lot of money, right? So this was back in the day where it would cost you 10 cents to text, right? You remember that? When it would cost you like 10 cents to send a single text. So that band, uh, they were, they they came from more better, better circumstances. So they had, they could afford that. So them and their fans were sending out, you know, tons of texts and us were like, we can't do that. <laughs> we're like, we're, so we're like calling the old fashioned way, like, hey, yo, or, you know, vote. Um, anyways, uh, they ended up winning because of that, you know, because they, their fans were able to, to afford being able to text and, and they won. And I was so upset. I was like, hey, you know, I think we did better than them. And, you know, our, our we, but ultimately it was up to the fans voting and we weren't able to do that. So oh, well, never again. No more battle of the bands. <laughs> Amia, and then we're gonna have Amia do another song if she would like. Yeah, I'm super down. Um, okay. I have not done any competitions like as a child. Um, like I said, I didn't really get into the music industry until I was like 23, because um, I wanted to be like mature enough. And I think that's a huge thing um, that I even like talk to my, you know, mentees about is that there's a lot that you have to go through. So um, I just chose not to, you know, to do any competitions. I mean, I did stuff at school, like for fun, like with my friends, like talent shows and, you know, I put together, like I would DJ and like, you know, burn CDs and stuff like that for people. But I was not, like, I'm not about to put myself out there to be upset already. Um, so, I mean, like, I was like, I'm already coming in with a lot of disadvantages, you know? So I was just like, let me not make it even more upsetting for my experience. <laughs> So yeah, as a as a child, I did not do any competitions. As an adult, I did one in San Antonio, which was like a riffs and reels video competition, um, which also ended um, in an interesting way. But yeah, so that's that's about it. <laughs> She's uh, just real quick. I just I want to I want to <laughs> agree with Alvaro. Like bands from mine dating back to like '93. You know, it used to be like, oh, win the battle of the bands, and we get to open for somebody famous or do this. I've had bands like bring in more people, get a better crowd response, get more votes, never won one of those things. So uh, when artists are like, hey, I'm in this thing, it's like, get out of it, that you are wasting your time. Run away, because it, it 
ultimately it's for the venue or for the whoever the promoter for it's nothing to do with the artist usually it's like who's who's making money from the event it's not going to be you (laughs) true all right real quick i'm gonna solo amia pull you (laughs) Uh, if I push the right button, solo, yay! <laughs> yeah, let me pull that up. Yeah. Um, well, I hope this song gives some more, some uh, some joy. You know, uh, it's actually called Champ Talk, and I actually wrote this song because of you know disappointing events. But you know, I write a lot of love songs, so this is more so a love song. <laughs> I said, please don't be bad for me based on what I'm having here. I'm not the happy that you've ever seen. My little love so proud of me. And I cheer on and cheer on things. I said, please don't be bad for me based on what I'm having here. I'm not the happy that you've ever seen. My little love so proud of me. Yeah, and I cheer on and cheer on things. I say, move away, love me like you love me, keep my soul space, out universal in the flow, babe, swing all day and just don't stay away, stay away, move away, what a time to be alive and just love safe, you want to dream how we can live that way, just stay in flow, love, we can stay. Please don't be bad for me, thanks for what I'm averaging. I'm not the average that you ever see. My little love, so proud of me. Yeah, and I cheer her on and she's my favorite. Hey. I say, please don't be bad for me, thanks for what I'm averaging. I'm not the average that you ever see. My little love, so proud of me. Hey, hey, hey. Never played with something you should cherish with life. You will not my vision, got to right here tonight. Expect the unexpected. It was not only for you, all your thoughts were high. Set. I'm a stand-on head, yeah, yeah. You did with me like it's so good. First, I love the way you do it. Swear the game won't be so easily accessible, yeah. Your loyalty and honesty and qualities When I look at me, don't worry about the city streets Just put your trust in me, and we gon' validate Hey, I said, please don't be bad for me Based on what I'm averaging, I'm not the average that you ever see My little love, so I'm proud of me, baby And I cheer her on that she's my favorite team, yeah I said, please don't be bad for me Based on what I'm I'm not the average that you've ever seen. My little love so proud of me, baby. And I cheer her on like she's my favorite team. My favorite team, yeah, yeah, yeah. My favorite team, yeah. I cheer her on like she's my favorite team, yeah. She cheer me on like I'm the favorite team, and I cheer her on like she's my favorite team, yeah. I cheer her on like she's my favorite team. Very nice. I love that. Uh, that was a great song. And Thank yay! You. Well Thank you. done. Thank you. Now it's Thank stuck you. in my head. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm grateful. My favorite part about this show is being able to introduce music. 
to people that would never ever get to hear it because eh. yeah, you never know. Thank you so the, much because of this world, this big old world we're in. Um, I see messages in the chat. What? Yes, thank you, Wiley. <laughs> and um, does Alvaro, do you have another video you want to share? We have, if you want to put it in the chat real quick, we have time. And while you're thinking about um, that, uh, let Wiley, uh, share it with Wiley on your on your phone. Uh, and then he can send it to me. My, my, the, okay. the, the, the reason for the, uh, of the uh, participation con uh, thing, I've done Battle of the Bands at least once. And then I did a, a, a talent competition in Dallas for Lilith Fair. And it was 300 singer songwriters that were all females. And I came in third place. Wow. And the stipulation, mm -hmm. thank you. The stipulation was of the of the audition was you had to be all acoustic. So no, no live, no, wow. no electric, none. I came in there with my acoustic guitar, came in there with my acoustic bass player, and then my, my piano player. She had her little ding 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 ding. All things were good, didn't win. I was like, oh, okay. The people that came in there with electrified everything, they won. I was like, oh. okay, okay, <laughs> okay. I could have brought all that, but no. Oh, there's the video. Okay, cool. Let's uh, bring up the video. Thank you. Um, uh, let that be a lesson to all you kids out there. Don't yeah. do Battle of the Bands. Battle of the Bands is it's not for the artist. I think one of the things that I've done with Coyote Music over the years is just work with artists, sort of mentoring or just giving feedback or whatever. And now I want to do like a whole podcast on why you shouldn't ever do battles of the fans <laughs> but or maybe you should so you can learn uh yeah so you can learn not to accept poop <laughs> you know you don't you only don't touch the hot burner because you you did right that's true yeah that's true. uh okay here's this what song, song is this Alvaro? yes what song? uh this is a song called crusty cumbia uh it's <laughs> us just having fun with uh with cumbia music uh you know, which is a big part of you know Mexican music. Um, and this one, we had our friend, Mr. Piñata. And this is like what he does for a living. Uh, he dresses up like a human piñata and he goes to parties and hangs out and <laughs> just drinks with you, I guess. And uh, we I thought it would be fun to do a video um, you know, uh, with him in it. And, and I, I think the video just kind of, speaks for itself. I, I apologize in advance. The intros to most of my music videos are very long. But right. I do like tell I like telling stories in the videos. So wonderful. Here we go. Ding ding ding. I think it's muted. Okay. Let me try again because I am special. Na 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 the cool thing about punk rock songs is that you can have a long intro, but then the song is going to be short, so the video is still under three minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, for real. Vamos todos a gozar, vamos todos a gozar. Es 
manos. He hecho el posible a chiflaros. Vamos todos a gozar. Ya te rimo bien perro. Todos nada para el lado. those pants <laughs> Ooh, that's so much fun Amia. you muted yourself let me unmute you okay Ooh. can you yeah, hear a good time yeah 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 that's awesome. that look like fun love seeing the strip it's awesome heck yeah i love how y'all incorporated that it's awesome saint mary strip it's awesome yeah that that place has been changing a lot recently uh i don't know if you've, you've been keeping up but yeah it's, have, it's, it's yeah. like a it's a battle right now like between the the people who have been moving in and mm -hmm. the venues and, and the bands like they're just i mean just similar to what what's been going on in austin for for forever you know on with the sixth street you know yeah. um rain is it, gone it, it, it's bad i know i'm like come on y'all like, yeah. like we after the rain music <laughs> Yeah, I was like, they coming for St. Mary's next. After Rainy was gone, I was like, yeah, St. Mary's, God bless. No, everybody yeah. wants to live near the music, but then when it's near them, they want it away. <laughs> right? They don't, yeah, like you don't know. Put it, uh, build us rehearsal halls and we will go practice there. Or build uh, uh, venues that have are soundproof better would be really amazing to see. Yeah. Yeah. I think. All right, so we're coming to the top of the hour. Um, plug yourself, what's, what's coming up, who's playing where, Amia first, go. Yeah, totally. Um, so right now, you know, I'm resting until the, the new year. So I will see you guys around like award season in February. Um, but other than that, right now, I really would love for y'all to check out my two products that I dropped this year, the Agenda Joy and the Agenda Love. They're out everywhere on uh, Spotify, Apple, everywhere you listen. But you can also go on my website, Amia Music and download the entire album uh, for yourself, right? And you can have it forever. And it comes directly from me with special artwork. Uh, so yeah, I would love for y'all to, you know, listen to that and jam that, share that with your people. Yes. Alvaro. Uh, well, uh, for myself, like we got one more show left for this year. Uh, it's gonna be a special kind of thing, very different from anything else. It's gonna be at, um, Texas Public Radio uh, Studios in San Antonio, kind of more of an intimate sit down kind of show versus like the, you know, dark, dirty <laughs> venues that we play at. Um, so that's, that's it for this year. And then next year, we just got a bunch of touring coming up. We have, um, we just released a brand new song, we're going to be releasing another brand new song in about a month. I'm gonna try to do what you do, Sonia, and, and do like one, one release a month. That'd be really cool. But it is hard. Oh, my God. It's really hard, but yeah, we're just trying to release new music, you know, and I think like, you know, releasing singles one at a time is kind of the way to do it these days, unfortunately, um, and then build up to an album. But yeah, we're just, we're in the trenches right now. Like, you know, I'm just glad everything is opening up again, you know, after COVID, right. um, glad to still be playing music and, you know, going to go even harder next year. So okay. that's what's up. Yes, just keep swimming. Uh, for myself, I am playing Monday, and then I'm playing New Year's Eve, my first ever New Year's Eve, and it's nine videos, nine months, uh, nine videos, nine songs for the next nine months. So May, tw uh, 2023, the 19th, May 19th, 
We're doing an album release, like an album, actual album release here in Austin. And you're all invited. Okay. Hey. You're all invited. You're all invited. Um, <laughs> <laughs> come, come hang out and um, enjoy. We'll have some fun things going on. And that's about it. Brother Wiley. Yep. Hey, I'm just right now just enjoying working with artists. Right. Yeah. I, I peek out behind a guitar every now and then right now. All right. Thank you, beautiful, lovely people for being here. And we're going to close out the show. Let me bring y'all off here. <laughs> My name is Sonia Javette. Thank you so much for being here. We'll see you next time. Same bat channel, same bat time. Bing, bing. Goodbye. <laughs>